and it was limited to just 500 examples. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and marvel at the Alfa Romeo 8C Spider. The 8C Spider was revealed to the world at the 2005 Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance. Production began in 2009 and like the coupe, it was also a limited run of only 500 cars. Whilst there were some mixed reviews of its handling, the coupe had of course been a success, owing mainly to its sensational looks and breathtaking soundtrack, so lopping off the roof would surely be yet another hit for Alpha. Still giddy with the success of the coupe, the Spider was launched and it caused quite a stir some of which can be credited to how the Italian babe looked with its top off, but mostly because the price was £174,000, a staggering £64,000 more than the coupe. But let's face it, the price is going to be the last thing on your mind if you're ever lucky enough to be in front of one of the 500 of these that were ever built. It's Alfa Romeo at its absolute finest, exuding passion and drama absolutely everywhere. This paintwork, for example, is Competizione Rosso. It's got a lovely sort of tint to it. In some areas, it's a deep, dark cherry red, and then in other areas here, it looks slightly orangey with a glint of light coming off it. It's such an exciting car, this, because it's one point in the recent Alfa Romeo history where you go, yes, guys, you absolutely nailed it. And it looks like they've gone and raided Maserati and Ferrari's parts bin, because you come round the side and we've got these gorgeous carbon ceramic brakes and obviously the red Brembo brake calipers. And it doesn't stop there. There's more theatre. You come across and we've got the lovely cloverleaf side shields uh, on the side of the car there. These beautifully contrasting black mirrors and then we move around the back and there's more simple elegance we've got these two single lights at the back which i just think look fabulous and then quad exhausts either side now interestingly enough with the boot on the spider it's actually a very small boot but it's a bigger boot than in the coupe which is all very odd um, and what do you get in here well there's a couple of little bags in here which kind of these work as tonneau covers. So when you take the hood down, these kind of just fall and clip into place. So there's two of those, one either side. Uh, and then we've got a bag in here, which is a car cover. But you could fit a couple of healthy weekend bags in there, no trouble at all. But with the coupe, for some reason, you get this really tiny little space. You probably fit in like a laptop bag or something like that. But that's the boot anyway. One thing that's really nice to note is this gorgeous carbon weave and as we go around the car you see carbon absolutely everywhere in an effort to save weight sort of feverishly save weight which actually they didn't really do they didn't really save too much weight I mean 90 kg I mean that's probably a little more than me but nothing massive and yet the performance is very similar between the two cars just take these bits out to show you how much space you get I'll pop those down on the ground there so yeah clearly there's more than enough space to put a couple of weekend bags in there. And in here, we've got this label here which says emergency kit and very cleverly, snugly tucked away. What else have we got in here? Uh, triangle, some tools, your very own pump in here. How cool is that? A couple of high-vis jackets should you need them, but yeah, a very complete kit. I've got another compartment at the front here pull that down and looky looky in there is your battery it's all rather efficient and un-Italian isn't it it's more kind of a Germanic style to have things squirreled away neatly like that but where we really want to be is where the action is at the front of the car so we'll have a look under the hood here so let's just see if I can find where to pull this up and it is incredibly light and that's because again we've got all this gorgeous carbon weave all the way down listen to that i mean it is feather light and then that reveals the magnificent alfa romeo engine and this very proud badge sitting right front and center and immediately you notice how far they've managed to shoehorn the engine back so you've got this sort of front mid-engined arrangement and then we've got this massive cross brace sitting on top of the suspension turrets there to give us some extra rigidity but of course all of that again adds weight which is why you've got 
so much carbon everywhere to try and keep the weight down. The stats, well, it has a 450 brake horsepower, 4.7 litre, naturally aspirated V8. It has a six speed automated manual transmission that runs through a paddle shift. Despite all the carbon literally everywhere, the Spyder weighs just 90 kilograms more than the coupe, resulting in a 0 to 62 mile an hour time of 4.5 seconds, just 0.3 seconds slower than the coupe. So there's really very little in the numbers to separate the coupe and the Spyder, which makes me wonder where my 64,000 pounds is going. Perhaps there's some diamonds or something on the interior. No diamonds, but it's clear that this cabin has been very well thought out and there is carbon absolutely everywhere. This is all one lovely piece of carbon here. And then we've got this aluminium trim, the carbon black and aluminium all just work lovely in harmony together. It's really an exceptional effort from Alfa Romeo, giving some of their more sort of tinny, plasticky interiors of late. For such dramatic exterior, the interior almost feels a little bit conservative, but it's very, very tastefully done nonetheless. The steering wheel, for example, has no buttons or switch gear at all, and that's really rather nice. You've got this very solid feeling steering wheel, nothing other than the Alfa Romeo badge sitting in the center. And then you've got these buttons down to the right-hand side center console, which are very sort of ergonomically placed and very well thought out. It really does feel slightly Germanic in here. What is going on, Alfa Romeo? Why can't you do this more often? And it really does feel that they've gone the extra mile with the interior because the seats are actually trimmed by an Italian furniture maker called Patrona Frau, who furnished some of the most luxurious houses, yachts and cars in the world and the first class seats on Hawaiian Airways, if you're ever lucky enough to enjoy them. But that aside, they really do feel nice and you do appreciate the extra effort and quality that's gone into this car. Yes, please. <laughs> Top down, sun shining in an Alfa Romeo 8C Spider. I'm a happy boy. Pretty straightforward to start off here. Uh, just get rid of the electronic parking brake. We're in neutral. One click onto the paddle, into first, and away we go. That is as easy as that. It's actually very nicely cocooned here with the top down, both windows up, and a windbreaker behind you. There's very little interruption from the wind in the cabin. It's going along in autos very pleasant, but you don't get the best engine noise. So I want to just click the little sport button there. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yes, please. That is just amazing. Oh yes. And back into auto and relax. Now I've not driven the coupe, so I can't compare the two, but what I've read is the setup on this car is slightly softer, which makes it more compliant on the road. And as a result, more of a pleasure to drive. But really, I think the pleasure of this car comes with the top down and that wondrous soundtrack. <laughs> it's quite a strange thing, this car, because at some angles, it looks very squat, very small, and then from other aspects, I think, crikey, that's actually quite a, a big car. Sitting in it and driving it, it's very manageable. You are aware of the width of the car, but it's not scary sort of Lamborghini wide. Having said the car doesn't feel wide, I'm now driving down a track, which the car is the width of the track. Excellent. Oh my God, are you kidding me? rare Italian sports car in tiny British village. Oh my goodness. One of the things that many of us still can't get over is the price of this car. 
because it was £174,000 when it was new. And that was about 60 grand more than the coupe. And yet the performance figures are the same. This is a little bit heavier, but it's very marginal in the, in the performance. I mean, I think we're talking point something of a second. I mean, it's nothing. And so this got carbon everything, carbon brakes, and put on a diet to save as much weight as possible. But um, perhaps as a result, that's why it was so expensive, or because Alfa Romeo got incredibly excited and thought they would be shifting a lot more, but there's only 500 of them. The thing is, you don't sort of walk up to one of these cars and go, Oh yes, it was £174,000. I don't think I should be buying one of those. No. If you can afford it, you want it, you won't be thinking about the price when you've got it. That's for sure. He can afford it. Oh, it's a lovely house. This is indeed a rare and special collectible car. And if you're into those two things, then you're in luck because we've got them in abundance at Collecting Cars. Head over to the site now, collectingcars.com and check out the latest curated consignments. And if you're lucky enough, have a bid on this beautiful Alfa Romeo 8C Spider. Thanks for watching and see you soon.